Hello there, welcome back. This is lesson five in unit 11, which is Redux. So up until this point, we've talked about what Redux was, uh, oxidation or reduction, what that happens, how to calculate oxidation numbers, um, how to write half reactions, how to balance them, how to write balanced Redux reactions. So we're gonna kind of take a slight pause on that introduce the second part of main part of this unit and then throughout the rest of the week and next week we'll combine all of them i think this is technically a friday lesson so next week we'll build everything and kind of see how everything relates to everything so today's topic is what are electrochemical cells so it works best so the way this lesson is structured there is a lovely reading that you can read and then there are questions on the third and fourth page. So this video kind of pinpoints um, specific things in the article that I think are important. Um, and then we'll go over the questions. So one of the things that we're going to talk about today is table J in your reference table. So it might make sense if you take out your reference table that you've been using all year and annotate table J as I do. So you can always have that in your notes. So um also looking ahead at homework doesn't look like anything is due tonight um just make sure you are following the schedule on the website and whatever your teacher says can you guys hear the ice cream machine the ice cream truck that's going by never mind okay back to this so this is one of the pictures on the from the reading and it shows something called a voltaic cell so we're going to learn how to draw these analyze these everything just not yet um you'll see we have oxidation and reduction happening and those half reactions so that info will come back um the balanced redox reaction will come in handy and all those pictures we will kind of figure out what these mean all the work of anode cathode salt bridge voltmeter all these different things sounds complicated we will work through this this is also a cool picture right here um, to show the anodes and cathodes obviously the cathode is getting bigger the anode is getting smaller you might be thinking like uh why we will get there um, and then if you ever look at the bottom of the page of the website there is a interesting way of remembering this okay so this is table j and so in the article that you read it talked pretty good pretty decently about what table j is how to read it but just to kind of sum it up about what it says and to kind of give you the most important things so people use table j to figure out which is the anode and which is the cathode of a voltaic cell so we're going to be practicing that later pretty shortly um, but let's just work out how to read this. So you'll notice that we have metals and nonmetals. Generally, the nonmetal column isn't really talked about. It's mostly the metals, but can't forget about them. Things at the top are the most active. Things at the bottom are the least active. Now, things at the top, or things that are higher up, tend to... So the higher you are, you lose electrons. And another lesson, another time we write Leo says GERD. If you lose electrons, that is being oxidized. And then one thing the article talked about was red cat and ox. So Leo says go here. Here are a bunch of randomly sounding words that explain the entire unit. So looking at table J, you're always being given a pair. So the thing that is higher up loses electrons and is oxidized. And if it's oxidized, that is the anode. Okay, so that's where N ox comes into play. N ox means anode is um, oxidized. Now, the lower something is, that means it is more likely to gain electrons, which means it is reduced. 
And that is where red cat comes into play. Red cat reduced is the cathode. So one of the ways I like to remember this is if you have high energy, think about a younger sibling, you as a young child or literally any wild child you see in the street. If a parent is like, dear child, you are very crazy. You are very active. If you bring all 10 of your stuffed animals, you are going to lose them. And hyperactive child is like, nah, I'm good. I'm not going to lose them. I'm going to hold on to all of them. Even if I jump around and out of my stroller, I'm going to carry all of them. Mom and dad are like, not happening. So that active child holding every single stuffed animal they own, they will bounce up and down in their stroller and run around. And guess what? They will lose their stuffed animals. If you have, or at least if you, your child is least active, it's kind of, you know, pretty chill. It's going to stay in its stroller. If it wants to bring all 500 or however many stuffed animals it has, fine. Is it going to lose any? Probably not because it's not doing anything. So the most active thing will be more likely to lose its stuffed animals. And in this case, if we're talking about metals, electrons. And the least active is more likely to instead of losing them, gain them. So weird little way to remember it. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, well, you had at least enjoyed a little story time. Um, okay. So going over these questions, it definitely makes the most sense for you to have read through the article first, because it definitely goes into things that I didn't mention. And I'm just gonna go over these questions pretty quickly. And again, there will be more in-depth writing answers on the key on the website. So what is a voltaic cell? One of the things that you need to know that it is spontaneous, meaning it happens on its own. It does not need any extra input. Once it's set up, it goes. And it turns chemical energy into electrical energy. So once any, everything is set up, that's why the voltmeter is in place. Once all the cells are set up, a current continues to flow. And so it turns this chemistry stuff into a, this electrical energy, and you can measure that electrical energy using the voltmeter. You can also, instead of a voltmeter, put a light bulb there. Um, that also shows the electrical energy. You can do this at home if you have wires and voltmeters and lemons and zinc and copper um but you can kind of also look at videos online for making lemon batteries because this is something that i would have done in class if we were actually in class it's okay though um electrolytic cell so just to kind of backtrack a second we have electrochemical cells so that's just talking about how we're using, how we're kind of combining electricity and chemistry together. So with electrochemical cells, there are two types. There are voltaic and there are electrolytic. electrolytic. Now voltaic cells also have a few other different names. You'll see it as galvanic, wide, just cause for right now, um, but they are very, very different. So be careful if it's, the word says electrochemical or if it says electrolytic, because they are very different things. So going back to the actual question, electrolytic cells are things you need to know. They're non-spontaneous because they require an outside energy to turn it on. So you'll see them in pictures later on this week with them having batteries and it takes electrical energy and converts it to chemical energy. And again, all the stuff will be explained in more detail uh, throughout this week. Okay. So number three, uh, voltaic cells are spontaneous and 
electrolytic are non-spontaneous. I'm going to abbreviate that. So next question, number four. If something is oxidized, that means electrons are lost and the oxidation number goes up. If something is reduced, that means electrons are gained and the oxidation number goes down. Again, you can use Leo says Ger to kind of help with whether or not they're lost or gained. Okay, next, at the anode, this is where oxidation happens. And this is where N ox comes into play. The cathode is where reduction happens. And if you think about red cat, that helps you. So you can memorize this the boring way, or just kind of use these weird mnemonics to kind of help make sense of everything. Okay, number six, the function of salt bridge, the salt bridge allows for ion transfer. So in more detail, I'm pretty sure the article goes into this. It helps balance charges in, e in each of the cells and kind of keeps it a kind of flowing circle. Um, but all you really need to know is not how it works, just that it does allow for these ions to move back and forth between the two um, cells. Now, only voltaic cells have a salt bridge, by the way. Okay, number seven. Which way do the electrons travel? They travel from the anode to the cathode. So in a voltaic cell, that's a lovely voltaic cell. Let's say this is the anode and this is the cathode. Electrons travel up this wire and down to the cathode. So they get removed from the anode piece of metal and they get placed on the cathode piece of metal. So that's why the picture I showed you in the beginning of this video showed the anode getting smaller and the cathode getting bigger. So you can even think of a fat cat because it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I'll leave it up to you to go to the website. Um, scroll down to the very bottom to find the second half of that mnemonic thing. Okay. Um, and then lastly, number eight for the short answer questions. The higher element, because again, we're looking at pairs, will lose electrons. It is oxidized and is the anode. And then the lower one gains electrons. It is reduced and acts as the cathode. So now that we've kind of gone through this, I want to go through um, 10 pairs with you to kind of really drive this point home. So again, we're using table J for this. Without it, it is almost impossible unless you've memorized it magically which if you have, congratulations, you were awesome. If not, you are still awesome because you know to use table J. So looking at copper and where is it? zinc. Zinc is the higher one. So that makes it the anode. And the anode is being oxidized because electrons are being lost. Remember, Leo says Ger, so that means copper is going to be reduced and electrons are gained because copper is the lower one. Next, we're looking at Pb and zinc. Zinc is higher up, so the zinc is the anode. It is being oxidized and electrons are being lost. Pb is the lower one, so is the cathode. 
it is being reduced and electrons are being gained. Once this kind of all clicks, this is very, 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 very simple. Okay, next one, Ba and Li. Barium is all the way up there. Lithium is even higher. So again, the higher one is lithium. It is oxidized and electrons are being lost. That means barium will be reduced and electrons are gained. Next pair, we have lead and gold. Lead, gold is the least active on the bottom. So because lead is higher up, it will be oxidized and electrons are lost. Gold is the, high, the lower one, making sure it is, meaning it is being reduced and it is the cathode and electrons are being gained. So just to point out, something may act as a cathode in one setup, but could also act as an anode in a different setup. It just depends who its pair is. Things act differently depending on who they're with. Even you guys are like that. You, act, you may act a little bit differently in the classroom than you do at home with your friends or with your parents. So depending on where you, who you're with, you act a little bit differently. Elements are the same way. Okay. MN and ZN. Manganese is right there. Zinc is right there. So it doesn't matter how far away the two are. Whichever one is higher, so in this case manganese, is the anode. It is oxidized. Electrons are lost. That means zinc is the cathode. It is being reduced. Electrons are gained. If at this point you're like, oh my god, why are we still doing practice questions? This is so easy. Well, that means you've learned something and that is good. Okay. Fe and zinc. Zinc is higher up. That means it is the anode. It is oxidized. Electrons are lost. Which means iron is the cathode. It is reduced. Electrons are gained. Okay. Cobalt and calcium. We have cobalt, we have calcium. Just make sure that you're looking very carefully at this list because it's very, very easy to kind of mix up these two things. Calcium is higher up. It is the anode. It is being oxidized and electrons are being lost. Cobalt is the cathode. It is being reduced and electrons are gained. I hope by, by the end of this unit, you know Leo says Gert, and it sticks into your head, kind of like how the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. That's how much we're doing this. It will stick with you probably for the rest of your life. So you're welcome. And I'm sorry, not sorry. Okay. Anyway, we have cobalt and nickel. Cobalt is higher. That means it is the anode, which means it is oxidized, which means electrons are lost. That means nickel is the cathode. It is being reduced and electrons are being gained. Copper and magnesium, we are almost done. Uh, magnesium and copper. Magnesium is, the, is higher up, it is the anode. That means it is oxidized and electrons are lost. That means copper is the cathode it is being reduced and electrons are being gained and for the very last one we have aluminum and zinc aluminum is higher up which means it is the anode which means it is being oxidized which means electrons are being lost and zinc is the lower one it is the cathode it is being reduced and electrons are being gained. So that is it for right now. Um, I don't think there was homework tonight. Actually, I forget. Let me go back and check. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. No, nothing for tonight. So that is it. Tomorrow we're going to go into labeling voltaic cells in a lot more detail. We'll practice with that the following day. So I think today's Monday. Um, no, this is a Friday lesson. So Monday, well, we will watch, we'll um, 
work on voltaic cells. Tuesday, we'll work on them more. Wednesday, we'll work on them more. Uh, Thursday, we'll talk about electrolytic cells in more detail. Never mind, something's off. Anyway, um, have a good week. Have a good day.